Okay, class, uh, can you identify this? Three guesses. First two don't count, right? This is called a resolution chart. And it's used by the engineers and cameramen to balance their cameras. The image orthicon is a very delicate electronic instrument, as many of you probably know. And you'll notice they have to, several things they worry about. One is these gradations of gray, which you see along here. The second one is these circles, which appear in the corners. These circles dare not be ellipses. And you notice that there are smaller circles inside the larger circles. Then there are these heavy lines and fine lines. And some of these fine lines are exactly at 90 degrees, as are the heavy lines. And it's a matter of tuning and balancing and getting as crisp an image as possible in the electronic gear. Now, this business of getting the information, if you will, off this chart through the electronic equipment is not unlike our problems of getting information from experimental data. Let's, for the moment, increase some of the electronic variability which surrounds this image uh, taking uh, operation. And as I increase the variability here, you'll notice my ability to discern some of the fine detail is diminished. If I increase that variability even more, if I make the screen snow excessively, you will notice that some of the other aspects begin to disappear. So as I increase the snow, as I increase the intrinsic variability, my knowledge, my ability to discern what's really going on, diminishes. And of course, this brings us uh, generally to a discussion of the variance of the observations. And you know, and I know that, roughly speaking, that as we increase the variability, which is surrounds our data-taking process, as we increase the variance, the information contained in each observation goes down, diminishes. Roughly speaking, the variance is the reciprocal of the information. There are some very precise mathematical definitions for information. There are several. One uh, rather loose definition for information is to just say it's the reciprocal of the variance. And we all know what the variance has been defined as being. Give me a distribution of observations f of y, and I can get you the variance of that distribution of observations by collecting what? The second moment of the observations corrected for the mean. So we all know how to, in essence, apprise the variance if we have the full distribution of observations. Now, one of the problems we face is we seldom do have the full distribution of observations. All we ever have is just a, you know, a humble collection of observations, maybe four or five. And the trick is, how do we determine or how can we estimate the variance based on this small collection of observations? Now, if I'd ask you all to estimate the mean of the population from a small collection of observations, you all promptly would have computed the statistic, the average. And the trick is, what statistic would you construct to estimate the variance? And some of you might immediately reply, well, how about the range? Now, the range is a good idea. After all, if the data are very vari variable, if they vary a great deal, then the range will be rather large. And so you could compute the range. Take the largest observation and the smallest, take the difference, and just present me with the difference and say, here's the range of the data, Stu. And that you know, gives you an estimate of what the variability of the data is. And I'd say, very good but it suffers from one grave handicap. It's not quite as good as it might be. The range is called an inefficient statistic. It depends on just the extreme observations. And you can see why it's inefficient. Only two observations literally get into the construction of the statistic. And the other thing that's wrong with the range is if n, the number of observations, is large, then you know, you get a very small observation, a very large observation. That range can flail around and becomes a very variable statistic. So it is a useful statistic for estimating the variance when n is small, but we have a better statistic for estimating the variance. And let's talk about our general problem of statistics and estimating parameters. <coughs> statistics are used to uh, estimate parameters, as we all know. And what statistic do we use to estimate the mean? You're all supposed to course back the average y bar estimates the mean. Now, what statistic am I going to use to estimate the variance? Well, I've just heaped a little, you know, scorn, not too much, but a bit of scorn on the range. I want to talk about another statistic, and I'm going to give the statistic the symbol s squared. s squared is a statistic which estimates sigma squared, the variance. Now, the trick is, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a word for s squared? 
You notice the word average has been reserved for the statistic and the word mean has been reserved for the parameter. And that's helpful when we converse with one another. It'd be great if we had a word for S squared. And we don't have. For kicks, I've been teasing a lot of people about using the following word for uh, S squared. The Greeks have a name for it. Let's call it the skedastic. Skedastic is the Greek word for scatter. And so we could use skedastic to estimate the variance, but this doesn't go down well at all with my uh, statistical friends. And so I'm afraid we won't use that henceforth in the course. We'll have to.